Hi, let's see what it takes to design a database with Caspio. In this video, we'll take a look at an e-commerce use case. By the time we're done with this video, we're going to learn how to create all the tables or entities that store the data, fields or otherwise known as attributes, data types for each field, and finally, how to link our data using primary and foreign keys. Okay, let's go ahead and begin. In this video, we're going to focus primarily on building the database foundation of this e-commerce application. If you'd like to learn more about how to build data pages and all the other application interfaces, check out some of our other videos that we have in our knowledge base and also our YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm gonna click on new app and we're going to build this application using a blank template. And I'm gonna give my application a name. I'm gonna call this e-commerce and as soon as you're done, click on finish. Once you see the application on the home screen, from here what you want to do is click on open and navigate down to tables. In Caspio, tables are the foundation of any app that you develop inside the platform. This is where all of your data is going to reside and here is where you're gonna build all of your table relationships. Once we're done building all the tables, we're gonna use the relationship screen to connect all the tables using primary and foreign keys. The first table that we're gonna build by clicking on new table, Let's start with the customer table first. So this table is going to need a customer ID, which becomes a primary key of this table, and it's going to uniquely identify each customer inside this table. Let's add a few more attribute fields. We're gonna have name, email, and perhaps password. You're not limited to just four fields. You can include as many fields as you want inside your table. It's completely up to you what data you wish to collect. For my email field, that's gonna be unique. And then we're gonna use the password data type to encrypt the password on table level. Once you're done adding all of your fields to your table, go ahead and save it and give it a name. My naming convention, I'm going to use ecom as a prefix because I wanna keep all the table names uniform. So later on, if I want to export this application, I can quickly and easily find all of my tables and make the file available for download. Underscore customers. Click on finish and you should be able to see that very first table listed. The next table that we're gonna build is the product table. So once again, we're gonna have product ID. My data type, I'm gonna use random ID. And let's list all the fields pertaining to products. Perhaps product name. You might even have product description. And finally, last but not least, you might have price. For the price field, we're gonna use the data type called currency. Product description, we're gonna use text 64,000 so that we can input more characters. And product name, text 255 should suffice. Again, you're not limited to just four fields. You can include as many fields as you want inside this table. Let's save the table and call it ecom underscore products. And you can see how quickly I was able to build two tables for this application. I need to build five additional tables so I think it makes sense that the next table that we build is the orders table so that we can track what customer is placing what order. So let's build that table. The first field is gonna be order ID. And once again, I'm gonna use the data type random ID. The next field that I'm going to include is a customer ID. Now this is going to become a foreign key because later on we're gonna be stamping the customer ID from the customer table and we're gonna be stamping that ID inside the orders table so that we can link our orders to our customers. My data type is going to be text255. Let's have order date. Now we have a data type for a date field. And then you're going to include all the necessary fields for placing orders. You might have a billing address and I'm just going to include one field. You might have a shipping address. Again, you might have a zip code field, you might have city, country. It really all just depends on what kind of data you want to collect on this order form. You might have total cost, and let's include all the payment fields as well. So for example, payment type. This is where you choose the credit card type, if it's Visa or MasterCard. You might have credit card number. Let's also have expiration date. And finally, you might have the security code. Expiration date is going to be a date and time field. Security code is going to be a number. Credit card number is also going to be a number data type. And then once you're done adding all of your fields to your orders table, just go ahead and save it. Give it a name, ecom, orders. 
The next table that we're going to build is the shopping cart table because we want to be able to place items into a shopping cart before we check out. So let's build our new table. And this table is going to have customer ID. And we also want product ID because we need to stamp the customer ID in this table so that we know what customer is placing those items into the shopping cart. And we also want to stamp the product ID inside this table because we want to know what products are being stored in the shopping cart. For my third field, we're going to have quantity. And finally, let's have price. Again, for price, we're going to use a currency data type. And for quantity, we can have integer. When you're done, save your table. And let's give it a name, Ecom Shopping Cart. And there's my fourth table. Now let's build a table that's going to store all the order details. So fifth table, click on new table link. And let's have order ID. Let's also have product ID, quantity, and finally, once again, we're going to have price. Let's have that be currency. Let's have this be integer. And for product ID and order ID, these are going to become foreign keys. Unlike the shopping cart table, this table is going to now store all the products and also all of the orders. Later on, we can track the orders to the customers to be able to retrieve. So when the customer logs in, they're going to be able to see the history of all the orders and what products they purchased. When done, save your table and let's give it a name, Ecom Order Details. We have two more tables to build and the final two tables are optional. I chose to mimic Amazon, so we're going to create a table that stores all the reviews and also all the comments. So let's have a new table, Review ID. Once again, I'm going to use the random ID. Product ID. Let's have customer ID. And let's have two more fields, maybe review date. And finally, the review itself. For the review, we're going to use Text64000 to allow customers to be able to input more notes or comments about the review. Review date is going to be a date and time data type. And then we have customer ID and we have the product ID. The reason why we have the product ID and customer ID in this table is because we want to know what customer is leaving the review for what product. So now let's save this table and give it a name, Ecom Reviews. And the final table is going to be the table that's going to store all the comments. So let's click on the link. Let's have comment ID be our primary key for this table. Once again, we're going to use random ID. Let's have review ID. Let's also have customer ID. And two more fields. Let's have date commented. And finally, the comment itself. For the comment, that's going to be text 64,000. Date commented, it's going to be a date field. And then we have our two foreign keys. We have the review ID and we have the customer ID. The reason why we have these two fields is because we want to know what comment is left for what review and who was the customer to have left that comment. Once you're done, go ahead and save your table. Give it a name, Ecom comments. And this is your typical blueprint or your typical structure for building an e-commerce type application. The next thing that we're going to do is connect all these tables using the relationship screen. So let's click on it. And what you want to do is simply just include all of your tables by clicking on the checkbox to the left. And if you're coming from an access database, you can move these tables around anywhere you want. You can work left to right, top to bottom. It's completely up to you. Here's how I'm going to arrange my tables. I'm going to move the orders table to the left. And you can also expand these tables if you want to. Let's move the customers table here somewhere in the middle. And right away you can link the customer table to your orders table. All you have to do is drag a line between this primary key to the foreign key in the orders table. Let go. And you can see how Caspi immediately recognizes this to be a one-to-many relationship. If you click on create, you will now see that connection. This basically means that a single customer can be linked to multiple orders. Let's have the shopping cart be next to our customers and let's link the customer ID to the shopping cart foreign key. Click on create and now you can see this connection because a customer can have multiple items inside the shopping cart. Let's put the products table here in the bottom right and let's link this. So we're going to move over the product ID to the shopping cart as well. Click on create. And now you get to see that connection because we can have multiple products inside the shopping cart. I'll put the order details somewhere here at the top. 
and I'm going to link the order ID to the order details, let go, click on create, and I'm also going to join the product ID into the order details. Let go and click on create. The final two tables that we have are the reviews and the comments, so let's move those here to the right. And the way you link these two together is we're going to include the product ID from this table, let go, and we also want the customer ID from the customer table, and let go. And finally we have the comments, and the way this one links in is simply just by moving the review ID into the comments table, click create. And finally we have the customer ID because we want to track which customer is leaving what comment. So once you let go and click on create, you will see that relationship as well. So this is your typical database structure when you're designing applications. Even if you're not using Caspi, if you're using an access database, this is how you go about linking your data. And this is how you normalize your data by creating multiple tables and linking your data using primary and foreign keys. And then later on, once you have your table foundation in place, it becomes much easier to build your application on top of your tables. And that's it. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave us a comment below. And also don't forget to subscribe for the latest tips and tricks on how to use Caspio. Thanks for watching and have a good day.